All right, all right, all right, all right. So right here we got chapter nine, personality and individual differences. Uh, I'll do half of it here and then half on the next part uh, of the chapter. So let's move on. So learning outcomes is talk about Dr. Freud's psychoanalytic theory and also neo-Freudian psychoanalysis. Um, and basically what this chapter is about is your personality. What makes you you are? Why are you so special? Right? It's not about the way you look or anything like that. It's your personality is what makes you special. Um, these are enduring characteristics that just last for you know ages, um, and it's consistent. People expect things from you to behave a certain way, whether that's good or bad. Um, we'll see. All right. So, the psychodynamic approach to personality basically says that what motivates you to behave a certain way okay and these inner forces are going on inside of you that that dictates how you behave okay you have no awareness of these internal conflicts and forces that go on inside of you but according to this approach it dictates how you interact with the world and one psychodynamic approach that's very famous is Dr. Freud's psychoanalytic theory. And these unconscious forces are very powerful. And he's really in-depth in them. All right? Uh, and he called this part of your mind the unconscious, where things that... Your brain wants hidden, or your mind wants hidden from your consciousness, is in. Okay, and it's the struggle that's happening inside of us is unconscious, and and it's a battle between what's right and what's wrong, and how you interact with the world. And um, Dr. Freud went very. He thought this was pretty much it. This is what dictated your personality, that, and what happened to you as a child. All right, who screwed you up as a child? If you can figure out who they, who screwed you up and how they screwed you up, well, then we can perhaps help with any kind of problems. Okay, so Dr. Freud says there are three main principles in your personality that's in the part of your unconscious that, uh, that do the struggles. First of all, it is the id. According to Dr. Id, or Dr. Id, Dr. Freud, the id is very animalistic. It's all about pleasure. It's about impulse. It's about our lack of impulse. Uh, it's always about sex or hunger or aggression. If you want something, get it. Who cares about any consequences? So according to Dr. Freud, we are born that way. That's the first thing that's, being, that's born is your id. Because when we're born, we just want food and pleasure. That's it. Whatever that, you know, feed us. Take care of us, hold us, very egocentric, okay? So when you think about the id, you got to think of a pleasure. Anything that's pleasurable is the id, and the id doesn't care about consequences. Okay, I forgot where I was at. Okay, the ego is the conscious self, okay? The ego is what has to relate to interact with the world out there, um, and suffer the consequences of the behaviors okay it's just the conscious self is who you are mr Levo. what you guys see and what i feel that is the ego okay uh, what else and then super ego which develops later in your adolescence age is sorry 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 all right this is um where you learn your morals and what's right and what's wrong. You don't want to space on guilt, doing the wrong things, will displease your parents, displease your teachers. Um, and so basically what's going on is you have the id on one side, the, the devil on one shoulder, the super ego on the other side, the angel on one shoulder, and they battle out to have influence over you, the ego. Okay. Uh, super ego develops later. Uh, someone who's like always in trouble, never does anything they're supposed to, you know, do drugs or or or, or 
or do things that's already very impulsive has an id dominated personality. All right. Someone who's like super religious, very judgmental of other people, you know, they might be very much super ego. Uh, it's always good to have a little in between. All right. So, according to Dr. Freud, you know, when things happen to us at certain developmental stages in life, they screw us up for life. And so, for according to him, when you come to therapy, we have to travel back in time and figure out where this happened, okay? And there's stages of development, and depending on where that, that incidents or incidents happen will dictate what type of uh, problem you have later in life. So, if, for instance, if something bad happened to you during the oral stage, and the oral stage is, you know, we have these uh, libidos that need to be to fulfill the id's wishes. Uh, this is done when you're a baby through the oral. And if you notice, babies are always putting things in their mouth. Always, 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 always. Okay? And so they have the pleasure sensation of putting things in their mouth. Now, if something happened during that stage, you might be called what's fixated. You get stuck at that stage, unable to really develop very well after that. And so we have to go back in the oral stage. You know, if you like putting things in your mouth as an adult, chewing gum all the time, smoking cigarettes, well, something may have happened to you during the oral stage of development. And then there's anal stage where we feel, you know, during the toilet training process, this is where we experience pleasure in either expelling feces or holding in feces. I know it sounds weird. This actually works when we apply it. So uh, there's called what's called anal retentive, uh, which means that with people who are very you know OCD like, hex to keep things very clean, they when they're during the, during the stage of potty training, anal stage, where you know, they enjoy holding it in. All right. Then there's anal expulsive. These people tend to be very messy, disorganized. Well, they enjoyed when you're through the anal stage of expelling it. Okay, the phallic stage, on three to six, it goes from, uh, you know, you have oral, anal, and then you have your genitals, okay? Three to six, and this is where Dr. Freud would suggest that uh, a child will have unconscious sexual interests in the opposite gender parents. So, you know, if you're a little girl, a little girl will have unconscious sexual interest in dad, and they will identify, and then and then they will identify with the same parent, same sex parents. Okay, uh, problems during this stage, improper, improper sexual behavior, uh, development problems, um, and so forth. Latency. Now, during latency from six to adolescence, Dr. Freud believed there's really nothing going on during this time period and so usually there aren't very many issues that arise and then genital stage which from adolescence through adulthood is uh, sexual feelings emerge you focus on sex in a mature way wanting to have sex with other people and according to dr freud you know anything that happened during this stage of development can have an effect on your your life And then he said, Dr. Freud believed we had defense mechanisms. Whoops. Where did I go? Uh oh, where did I go? Sorry. Sorry. Okay, which are unconscious defense mechanisms that you do to protect your ego, to protect your, your, your super ego. Okay. One of those being is repression, something bad happened to you, so you repress it in your memory. It's there, you just can't get it. And so we, or if you have these impulses that you want to do, you know, your, your mind will hide it, so we can't get to it. All right. And so here is a uh, list of all the defense mechanisms. Make sure you look over this and be able to apply it. Okay, neo Freudian psychoanalysis. This is a new way. Uh, Dr. Freud had his own um, you know, students, and those students went out and made up their own uh, psychoanalysis. Um, we met Carrie Horney, 
uh, Carl Jung, or all his, his protégés, and they went out and developed their own at the displeasure of Freud himself. Freud became very angry when his students went out and developed their own theories that were similar to his, but different. Um, so they collected, they, you know, they didn't like the uh, the five stages of psychosocial development, all that stuff. Dar uh, Carl Jung came up with the collective unconscious, in which we inherit uh, a consciousness uh, from our ancestors, um, and even our animal ancestors. And he has a really good point about that. There are things that we have acquired in our brains instinctively from our ancestors that we know. You know, the child has nightmares about monsters. Well, 500,000 years ago, a million years ago, same kind of dreams because it was serious. There were real monsters out there that can eat you back then. Um, okay, Ornai's, uh, he, she was really into women's issues, all about social relationships between the parents and the child, the inferiority complex. Um, okay, I'll let you read that one. I gotta hurry up, only got a few minutes. Okay, trait theory, you know, uh, Trait theory, well, this is, I got it wrong. All right. This is to identify basic traits. We don't care how these traits, and according to the trait approach, we don't care how these personality traits came about. We just want to be able to measure them. Okay? We don't care about where you got, why you're so funny, or why you're not so funny, or why you're so uptight. According to the trait theory, we want to just be able to label that you're uptight and that you're funny. Okay, so we're describing personality. And, you know, we have extroversion, people who are very social, sociable, uh, neurotism, emotional st stability, and psychotism, uh, which your reality is distorted. Big terms to remember for the future. Okay, the learning approach to personality. Basically, we have offering and classical conditioning. The reason why some people are so funny is because they've been conditioned through reinforcement or punishment to behave that way, according to Dr. or uh, B.F. Skinner. Okay, we're all just living in a Skinner box everywhere we go. So everywhere we go, we're like a rat with a bar. We're either reinforced or punished depending on the behavior that we show. All right, so if people want you to behave a certain way, they will reward you or reinforce your behavior for behaving that way. Uh, and then social cognitive approach, you know, person's thoughts and, and all those other things that go into behaving a certain way. How you feel about yourself. Do you believe in your performance? Do you have high self-esteem? Uh, evolutionary approach, you know, Basically, everything about me, there's an evolutionary purpose for, for it, all right? For behaving this way, for talking this way, for, for coming here in this room, there is an evolutionary approach to this. Because somewhere, somehow, in the history of our species, um, it was important for survival, okay? And, you know, I really enjoy this approach, and I believe most of what we do is from an evolutionary perspective. Humanistic approach is the feel-good approach. You know, we're talking about people's reaching their full potential, becoming self-actualized, um, doing their best. A self-actualization is reaching your pinnacle. And unconditional positive regard is just accepting people for who they are, no matter what. And people accepting you for who they are, even the things that annoy them, they still accept them. And for you to reach your full potential, you have to be able to have unconditional positive regard. Uh, there's no best single theory that, that explains everything. I think they're all worthwhile, including Dr. Freud's. I think uh, Dr. Freud, when you apply his terms, oral, anal, phallic, all those, they work. They really do work. I know it's incredible. It's weird, but they do work. Um, personality, in general, can be viewed from uh, many different perspectives. And it's, it's good not to just focus on one and think that's the only way to do it.